As it comes time to induct another Manning into our hall, we need the man who can tell the story of a couple of Newman High School quarterbacks better than anyone. One was inducted a few years ago, Peyton Manning. The other, his younger brother, Eli. We actually nicknamed him Easy um, because he was just so laid back. I mean, he just didn't let anything bother him and it was just a whole different kind of personality, but with the same results. Uh, he just knew how to do it with a, a soft tone, but with a competitive push, if you can imagine that. The recruiting battle for Manning after his stellar play at Newman led him to Ole Miss. That's right, where his father Archie starred, and where the campus speed limit is Archie's number, 18. And when Eli was a freshman and got a ticket going 45 in an 18 mile an hour zone, you knew that he didn't really care about that tradition itself. He won the Maxwell and Unitas Awards at Ole Miss, where he set or tied 45 school records. He was the number one NFL pick, and after declining to play in San Diego, he was traded to the New York Giants. You know, I like the organization, so I think uh, it'll be a good place, and I think things will work out here. He was great because he was quiet, which is what a rookie should be. There, he won two Super Bowls and was named MVP of both. This four-time Pro Bowler played in 236 NFL games, never missing a game because of injury. His numbers still are among the leaders in the SEC and the NFL. His legacy is unmistakable. The one thing that really stands out in my mind was after the Super Bowl, Eli's on the podium, and in a lot of ways, how much pressure that took off of this young man who came into the NFL with a name that basically is synonymous with the league and had proven himself. He was no longer Archie Manning's son. He was no longer Peyton Manning's little brother. He was his own man. He was Eli Manning. The Giants included Manning into their ring of honor and retired his number 10 in 2021. No Giant will ever wear number 10 again. Ole Miss also retired number 10 that same year. Offense, defense, uh, senior class, freshman class, race had no bearing on it. Eli Manning was a great teammate. He's just, he's just one of those special kids that you, you just hope comes around more than just once in your career as a coach or even once in your life as a, as a person. This New Orleans native is on the way to Canton and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But on this Saturday night in July, there's a stopover in Natchitoches as his home state and members Archie and Peyton say welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Louisiana Sports Hall of Famer, Eli Manning. Congratulations, Thank Eli. You. Great to see you. Uh, before there were Super Bowl champions and uh, MVPs, you were the son of Archie Manning in New Orleans. Uh, before you started, had a chance to establish your name. What was it like growing up in New Orleans? It was great. You know, my dad. My dad retired from football in 1985. I was four years old. I really don't remember him as a football player. But uh, when I was, you know, five and six, seven years old, he was announcing games for the Saints and. My brothers and I, we'd, we, would, uh, we would go to the games, go to the Superdome with them, and people would always stop them. They would ask for an autograph or ask for a picture. I just thought that's what dads did. Um, I would go to my friend's house for a sleepover, and the first thing I'd do, I'd walk in and ask the dad for an autograph and a picture. I got a, a pretty good collection, Mr. Egan, Mr. Brinson, a few bankers, maybe a lawyer. But... Um, but what I did notice about it when, you know, when I went to Ole Miss and someone asked me for my first autograph, I just did what my dad did. He always signed every autograph. He took every picture. He talked to every person. He shook their hand. He had a conversation. He was polite and kind to everybody he met and had a big influence on just the way uh, we were raised and how you should treat people. Some people may think because of your dad and the success that he had and the, and the reputation that maybe football 
was automatic. Of course you're going to play football. Was it always football? Were there other ones you thought about pursuing? No, we, we, uh, I, I think yeah, a lot of people assume my dad had a master plan of creating NFL quarterbacks. Uh, nothing could really be further from the truth. He tried to raise three uh, good boys, and, and uh, we, we played a ton of sports. He, he, he believes sports, uh, you know, just gave a lot, of, a lot of great life lessons and teamwork and dedication, commitment. Uh, and dealing with defeat and and loss, kind of maybe the same in the same way. And so we played. I played basketball through high school. Uh, played baseball mostly through high school. And so we we grew up playing all the sports. I didn't play. I started playing tackle football uh, until eighth grade. Uh, but we played a lot in the front yard. Uh, played with my brothers and pickup games. And so um, it was always always my favorite sport and the one I worked the hardest at. So I wanted to go there next. How about the siblings and and the battles and the growing up with the brothers? Yeah, I think both, both my brothers, um, they actually take full credit for the fact that I've met, never missed a game in high school, college, or the NFL due to injury is because of the mental and physical torture that they put me through <laughs> as a kid. Um, uh, uh, Peyton, you know, Cooper's the oldest, he's, he, uh, he, so he picked on Peyton. Peyton thought it was his job to, you know, follow that, pass that down to me and pick on me. He used to pin me down. He put my hands back like this, my arms back. He put his knees on my arms and he'd knock on my chest and make me name the 28 teams in the NFL. <laughs> he thought that one day I would need to know that. It might be important one day. Um, I eventually got, you know, got smart and, and you know, learned all the teams by conference, by division, could name them all really quickly, and then he went on to the SEC, the Big Ten, the <laughs> Pac-12, and, and, and every conference. And if he just wanted to make me cry, he would, uh, he would say, name 10 brands of cigarettes. <laughs> that was tough for, <laughs> tough for a seven-year-old to do. Um, but he, he would always end it with, uh, he would always end it with, if you tell mom or dad what, what I just did to you, I'll make it worse the next time. And so I always kind of thought of uh, the defense, uh, you know, hey, if you go tell the trainer, uh, people close to me, my great friends, my family kind of know that I could, uh, I could, you know, I had, I had a different side of me. I had a, a, a funny side to me, but I just never let maybe the media ever know. I never want someone to be able to question anything in my commitment to football. And, and so um, I think once I retired, I just didn't really care anymore what people thought. And, <laughs> and um, you know, had the opportunity to make fun of my brother a lot on TV and, and opened up some opportunities for me. So you're saying the New York media might have jumped on something like that? I thought they were <laughs> easy going. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. They, uh, there were just so many of them. There's so, much, so many media up there in New York. And, and, and so... Uh, I, uh, you know, I was friendly with them, but I never, never quite trusted them, I don't think. Well, we certainly, have, <laughs> we certainly have enjoyed the way you've represented New Orleans throughout your entire career. It's not all that long ago you retired, so I have to ask you, how is life after football being dead? Hall of Famer, Eli Manning. <laughs>